anticipated release uh, should be coming out this quarter. <laughs> Uh, so first I'm going to buzz through the features and then I'll talk about them a little bit more in depth. Uh, so first of all, probably the, the most awaited feature is high availability. This is the high availability of the eucalyptus service. The service itself will never go down once you deploy this. Um, we'll also have user group management. We've mentioned this several times that we're going to be doing the AWS uh, Identity and Access Management API. And we've also extended that with quotas because you know in Amazon you know your quota is your credit card. Uh, with us, your quote you can actually you know uh, restrict people to certain things. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Uh, reporting has been completely removed and rewritten. It's much more powerful, much faster. Uh, we also have uh, some EBS updates. We now have boot from EBS, um, and we've also added uh, NetApp and JBot support uh, in addition to Dell Equal Logic. Uh, we've done significant improvements in the Windows support. Uh, we now have scriptable command line administration for everything. So before you had to use the GUI to do things that you could only do through the GUI. Now you can do everything through the command line that you could do through the GUI. And we've added some new platforms. So we have VMware Port Out 1, RHEL 6.1, and uh, CentOS 5.7. So high availability. So what this is, is it's, it's a very overloaded term. What this means is that the, the eucalyptus service, in other words, your ability to interact with the cloud and find out what's running, describe volumes, describe the instances that are running, get information off from eucalyptus, is highly available. So that will not go down. Um, the other thing it will do is when there is a failure and we fail over to the, uh, the other high available component, uh, you will get a uh, automated uh, notice that that has happened so that you can correct the information and get yourself back into a highly available mode. And we also have uh, failure recovery procedures so that you can uh, get yourself back up. And so here's just a, an example. So in a typical uh, deployment that you have today, you'll have the components, cloud controller, walrus, the storage controller, cluster controller, and, and node controllers, um, you know, set up in a, a typical non-HA mode. And the, the power here is that getting your system into HA is really, really simple. Right? All you do is you just duplicate those components. Whoa. All right, you duplicate those components, um, and then one is a master, one is a slave, and when one cloud controller goes down, the other cloud controller would take over the system. And it has you know, everything available, and you're not going to lose anything, and the failover is, is very fast. Um, but you don't have to go out and set up eight or ten systems in order to try out HA. The other thing that you can do is if you're trying to proof of concept this, you can actually put all the components together on one node um, and then just duplicate that with all the components on a separate node and then have HA between those two nodes. So if there ends up being a problem with the component here or if this machine goes down, everything fails over to the other machine. Now you'll notice that there is one thing that I've showed here that doesn't make this highly available. And it's not really part of the eucalyptus software, but it's part of the infrastructure, and that's a switch. In each of these things, I've had a single switch that is a single point of failure in the system to keep the service up. So the other thing that we've done is we've made sure that eucalyptus can work with multiple switches, such that even if a switch goes down, the other switch can uh, route the traffic appropriately. So um, yeah, we've made sure that the software can handle that uh, in the infrastructure. So for user and group management, uh, we have access control, so the um, account holder has control uh, over what things the users and groups can do. So maybe you want certain groups that can't run certain instances or can't create volumes. And then we have quotas so that you can also restrict that. So maybe you want a user to only be able to, to um, run five instances and only create ten volumes of only some size, right? Because you don't want them to go nuts and then take over the cloud and you know, wreck it for everybody else that's using it. So we have those quotas in there as well. And then we have, uh, for identity management, we have integrated with LDAP and Active Directory. Um, and what you can do is just take your current LDAP service and import that, and then you have uh, you know, all of your user and, and group information then from your LDAP system. Uh, an important thing to note is that this LDAP system is read-only. So what we do is we continuously can pull from your LDAP system. So as you add new users, we can pull that in, and, and um, they're, they're just part of the Eucalyptus cloud as well. Uh, for usage reporting, we can have we have a, a number of canned reports that you can do, but we can also get you access to the raw data so you can write any kind of customized report that you can dream of. 
Uh, and then with uh, Amazon Inability Identity and Access Management, IAM, you know, you can now uh, manage groups of users. For Windows and EBS, we now have um, the Windows Image Template Creation Tool, which used to be sort of a special tool that we only had our sales engineers access to. We're now opening that up and, and going to give that to everyone, so that it's much easier for you to create Windows images. We know that that's one of the toughest things that we uh, we do. Um, we have uh, flushed out the AWS Windows API implementation. Uh, you know things like you know Git Password and all the other APIs that are out there for for Amazon Windows stuff is now in Eucalyptus. Uh, we also have the AD integration support, so you can you can configure it at creation time. And um, we have Blue from EBS support, um, and we also added ephemeral disk support from Windows. So this is something that was missing in Google this too. And that's it.